Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be considering question 11 out of group 2 for section 1.3, which reads as follows. If V is an n-dimensional real vector space, should the kernel of any non-zero linear transformation T from V to R is a linear subspace of dimension n minus 1, and conversely that any such linear subspace is the kernel of some linear transformation T from V to R? Take a couple seconds to try this out for yourself, and then we'll get on with some hints, and then we'll go on with the proof. Alrighty, for some hints, we've got two statements to prove, so you should try to split up into two different statements. And um, for the first part, the hint is that you should look at the theorems that we proved uh, in this section and see which one is most relevant to considering the dimension of certain subspaces. And for the second one, try to take a look back at the proofs of some theorems and see if there's any thoughts that are useful here. In particular, look at thoughts about extending uh, the bases of subspaces into the bases of spaces. Alrighty then, let's get on with this. So, for the proof, let's start with the second one first. We're going to prove that any linear subspace of dimension n minus 1 is the kernel of some linear transformation t from v to r. So to do this, we see that um, we first note that we have an n, n minus 1 dimensional subspace. So let's write these vectors as w1 comma dot 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 up to w n minus 1. And this is a subspace we can extend this to a full basis of v by appending a vector v1. Next, we'll recall by the mapping theorem that if you have a basis for a vector space v, then any transformation t is fully defined by specifying the images t of v i for any vectors in uh, specifying the images of each of these vectors. So we can simplify uh, simply specify t. Uh, Let's see, t of wi is equal to zero. This will ensure that this subspace is the kernel of uh, of this transformation. And then we'll see that t of um, alpha v1 vector is just equal to alpha. Um, this clearly is not the zero map because it sends certain non-zero vectors, to, uh, sends vectors to not zero. For instance, if you take uh, t of v1 is going to equal 1. So there are certain elements that are, that are sent to not zero. Therefore, this map is not the zero map, so we're done with that. We see by construction that the kernel of this map is the entire n minus 1 dimensional subspace. And we see this goes into r because it outputs a uh, scalar. Or if you think about this either as a scalar or alpha times E1, where E1 is just the element 1, is the only basis vector of R, if you consider R as a vector space for a second. I'm sure you actually should do that. You should use this alpha E1, or alpha, where E1 is just the number 1 in the real numbers, because remember, linear transformations are between vector spaces. So with this, we've constructed, we've shown that any linear subspace, excuse me, any linear subspace of dimension n minus 1 is the kernel of some linear transformation t from v to R, um, and this transformation is non-zero. Great, so we've proven the second half. Let's prove the first half. We're going to show, the way we're going to prove this is, as per the hint, by applying the rank nullity theorem. Let's recall what the rank nullity theorem says. It says that the dimension of v is equal to the dimension of the kernel of z. I'm sorry, the null space of z is perhaps a better way. Uh, the dimension of the null space of, of t plus the dimension of the image of t. So first we'll note the dimension of v is equal to n. So we have n equals n equals, and we're going to call this the nullity of t, because nullity meaning the dimension of the null space, nullity of t plus the rank of t. And this is just simply the definition of the rank nullity theorem. Next we'll note the rank of t is less than or equal to 1 but greater than or equal to zero. This is because um, the output space is only one dimensional, and the image of a space cannot be larger than the space itself. Therefore, let's check these two cases. Clearly, rank of t is equal to zero or one. 
if the rank of t is zero then that means every that means that the image of t is simply the zero vector but that means that t is the zero map and we've excluded that case already therefore we get n is equal to the nullity of t plus one since the rank of t must now be one we subtract this over and we get the nullity of t is equal to n minus 1. And we'll call the nullity is the dimension of the null space, or the dimension of the kernel. But now the dimension of the kernel is n minus 1. We're done, because our goal was to show that the kernel of any non-zero linear transformation is a linear subspace of dimension n minus 1. And we've already proven the kernel is a linear subspace of the, of the domain, and we've shown that its dimension is n minus 1, so we're done. With that, thank you for watching.